Hello, I am Ruth Ann Bowen with Wix Design Her, and I am here to help female entrepreneurs raise the bar when it comes to their websites. And my goal is to have you never shed another tear when it comes to your Ooh. website. Yay, no more tears. No tears. So today's topic is one that's very close, very near and dear to my heart. We're gonna be talking about PR, public relations. I used to work in public relations many moons ago, and the landscape of PR has changed a little bit, um, but I have an expert here today. Her name is Christine Gallup of Busy Girl Tech, and she is going to address the topic of public relations and how you can get media coverage for your small business, even though you're just starting out. So Christine, welcome to Wix Design Her. I am so excited to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about your story, who you are, and what you do? Sure. Um, my background is in content and also content and getting the word out. So crafting stories that really match companies' message. Um, I've had a lot of work with startups um, and have actually started my own site, which is Busy Girl Tech. So I feel I can really relate to your customers in the sense that what are some great growth hacks that don't cost a lot to really get the word out and what's achievable? Um, and I like what you said, your experience in um, public relations many moons ago, but like we said before we started, you know, there's a lot of, of jargon and marketing terms and, you know, a lot of it is just new words put on really ideas that have been around forever. And those ideas I'd love to, these concepts to really how to get the word out, I'd love to share. Yes, yes. I'm so looking forward to that discussion. So let's start. Um, most of the audience are newer businesses. They've either just started or they're thinking about getting started. So when it comes to getting publicity for a new business, what does a female entrepreneur need to do? What does she need to do to start? How does she start when it comes to publicizing her business? I really think the most important thing is that as the owner to really acknowledge that you are the expert on your business you know your story and for you to own your story. So another thing is stories is one of those words that's thrown out. So I want to just break it down really quickly to understand what that is. Okay, good. Um, so a story in my idea has three components, just like in any day, like Goldilocks and three bears, right? You have a setting. So the setting really correlates to that elevator pitch of being able to say what you are and what you do. And I'd like to really iterate that it's important if you find yourself giving your elevator speech and it's three, four, five sentences to hold, stop, really craft it down to one sentence. Because what that means is that you really understand how each of the words is really encompassing your business. Wow, down and to one sentence. One sentence, one okay. sentence. So be brief. And if you're brief, that means that you've nailed it. And also know how your product, what is the special sauce, what is the differentiating factor on the market. So let's say you're a photographer. What is, how would you say, and you know, this is not something I remember when I was starting my, it takes some time to really think about it. So you're at the beginning phase. It's okay if you're and you're like, I don't know. Just put that in the back of your mind and really start thinking what would be the thing that differentiates. Perhaps you specialize in beach photography with kids. You know, what is that angle? And then the other thing is really important for your story is who needs to hear your story. Mm -hmm. And what that means is who is your audience now? Who would you like your customers to be? And also people for, sometimes forget where they want to go. So in the future. So you really want to keep both groups and being able to nail it down as a sense of demographics. So those of you who've been working on websites, you probably have already thought of these things, but really make sure that you own that and so that you can articulate it. And then the other thing too is that every single story needs conflict. And what conflict means, the problems. What are the pain points? How are you making customers' life easier? So again, back to the photography example, perhaps you are able to take people whose first time's uncomfortable or you've really shown ability to do great LinkedIn profiles and you know, what is it, what pain points are you able? So really bringing that pain point even into your elevator pitch is really important, but people forget the conflict and you've got to have that. So know your story. And then when, before you give it out to your story, 
find out who is telling your story already. Now, not the exact story, but that's who you want sharing the information. Good points. Okay, so when we're talking about pain points, you know what? It's exactly the same when it comes to your website content. Exactly. Because all of the content on your website, you really should be addressing what are these issues that my visitors mm -hmm. are what are they what are they dealing with right. and how do i help them so it's nice to hear that that's the same thing so literally they could take the information that they have put on their website as far as how we help address those pain points and turn it into a pr pitch or in their exactly LA. and also vice versa as you're updating your um your site and the information the content that's what I think it should all have many purposes and we're busy, right? So to have one concept and to put it into web design, to put it in outreach is all the same. So right. really honing in on that story does affect. And the important thing also to note is that when you're um, telling your story and you said it too, you're, you're giving it away. So this is like, I think the main, the main takeaway from today, if nothing at all, is that to be in the situation where you are offering and not taking so the concept of like how do i get right how do i get pr how can i convince someone to do something for me where the really for the long-term success and this takes a while i know we'll touch on that about kind of expectations of how long it takes but really being the position of how can you help media tell your story what can you do yes because we those media that. people those reporters are extremely busy so the more work that you can do for them probably the better chance you have of getting covered isn't that correct exactly and the thing is though to approach you got to remember again the mindset of media so I actually as a journalist and reporter myself I have that experience and editors you know they're they're constantly getting information and this the sea of information right so you know the idea of just cold calling and kind of saying hi i'm so and so and the first time they meet you is that you're you have your hand out asking you know you've really kind of set instead what is kind of thing i like to like you know when you're shopping and you go to the store and you're just window shopping and they have like they're passing around glasses of champagne you know you take the, they already are giving you something you mm -hmm. take the champagne and you may be looking, but you're thinking, hmm, they must be in a position of success or of wealth to be offering. So if we translate that to the entrepreneur, if you can go to a reporter and say, hey, I have something to offer. I'm not asking for anything. Let me help. All of a sudden you've started the relationship very differently than being kind of the one taking. So how can you, how can you do that? One of the simplest things is that when you find out which reporters, and we'll talk about kind of how to single out the reporters, but start commenting, for example, on their stories. One of the best things you can do is if you're on LinkedIn a lot, you find a story, you, let's say you look and you found a story that was really helpful to you as an entrepreneur, as a photographer. You go to LinkedIn and find them and say, you know what, that article that you wrote was super helpful for me, this is why and then briefly introduce. Yeah, that is fabulous. Because one of the things that, when I was working in publicity, one of my main things was building that relationship with the reporter and not looking at them as just someone who was my gateway to media coverage, exactly. but really treating them like a human being because right. that's what they are. So, you know, get to know their name, get to know their beat. Don't send them something that is completely not in their wheelhouse because boy, that's a really surefire way to turn a, a reporter off. Um, you know, finding that person, just like you were saying, and building that relationship. So when I was talking about PR to a college class one time, I told them, I said, PR does not stand for public relations to me. PR stands for personal relationships. Because really, that is where, that's where the rubber meets the road when it comes to building that connection and building that relationship is treating them like a human helping them out as much as you can and like you said giving them something that they can work with or get to know them a little bit better because somewhere down the road you know they may not have anything and this has happened to me before where you know timing is everything so mm -hmm. you know having those deposits made into that account with that reporter right you right. may not see the benefit of that 
12 months from now because the timing just isn't right. But eventually, at some point, that story that is that you're perfect for, they will remember you because you took the time to get to know them. So, yeah. And I think also, you know, especially when you're starting your business, I think when you think about when you dial in and think, what do I have to offer? It also kind of puts you in a more confident stance or, or you know, shuttles you into that position because you're saying like, I have something of value to give. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of a different position versus like, how can, again, how can I get? Um, when you say, for example, your feedback and you're looking, you're also building your own um, brand as far as becoming an expert in your area. You know, and then there's lots of ways, you know, as far as to develop that relationship with reporters, um, you know, really using social media, mm -hmm. you know, there's um, getting on Twitter and Twitter has a great, you can create lists. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, so let's say um, you are in the counseling and you are, you, you maybe specify in teenage, teenage counseling, you know, finding the experts in that area and creating a list. And if you're not, if you're not sure or you're not, you can always, you know, our friend Google. Yes. And, you know, what are the top, you know, tech influencers in this or top that? And you can find the list. And once you create a list, you can just list, you know, people think often social media is to amplify. Well, it's a great place to listen mm. and to listen to the conversation and join in. I like to say, you know, the public relations is, you know, relationships, but also like you should first con converse and then convert. Mm. So converse means sharing knowledge, saying, and also promoting, like, I really like that article. Let me retreat. Let me put this on my blog, you know, promote others. Yes. Down the road, they'll give back. But you're also saying like, I really, you're gathering, what is your brand? It's serving you as well. I love what you just said. Converse then convert. That's yeah. so true. So true. We're so quick to want to like, blah, here's all about me. And then. Right you know, but really just have that nice conversation and get to know then convert. So, okay. So I, I have this other question though, that I want to get to you because we could talk yeah. about this forever. Um, what should a female entrepreneur expect when she's starting to work on getting exposure for her business? So like, we we're just talking about a little bit, um, is this a quick process or is this something that's going to take some time? If you want in PR speak to go above the line, which is organic relationship building and free, right. <laughs> it takes time. So yes. you, know, you can throw money at the situation. I also just want to do a quick word there. If you're going to pay for advertising, really make sure that you've got your story dialed in, your market, your demographics, and so you're spending your money wisely. Yes. But if you want to do long-term relationships, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And what you can do though is really make it break it down so it's like a five, 10 minute kind of process every day. Like, like I said, like the the Twitter links. Um, you know, using another basic thing is using Feedly. Feedly is you can, you know, do different um, store, go to Feedly and you can say, okay, in this vertical, I want to read these magazines. And so it gives you an idea of the headlines, the topics. You glance through it, and so you can always find new writers and new interests. But if you do it daily, and again, this interaction, this conversation can be likes, you know, liking something, mm -hmm. making a comment, um, reposting, retweeting, and this can be done on Facebook. I, f I think Twitter is very effective and quick, so that's why I'm using, I, I say that foremost. Mm -hmm. um, and then Instagram is another, depending on your venue. But to get reporters and to get media, I would say if you had a limited time, I would pick one would be Twitter. Okay, that's a good point. So are you on Twitter? Yes, I'm on Twitter. I'm, okay, I, and what's your, where can we find you on Twitter? <laughs> I'm at Twitter, I, Busy Girl Tech, and also C Gallup underscore. Okay. Well, and we'll feel see. free, if any of you guys have any questions or, you know, if that's a great place, please, you know, I'd love to find out what you're doing and, and what you need advice on, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, it's really, we're here to help each other out, right? Right, that's exactly why we're here. That's exactly a rising right. tide lifts all boats. Yes, yes. I love it. So what's one actionable tip that she can make today to get closer to getting media coverage for her small business? Okay. I'm actually going to give three. Good. I can't stop myself. Good. Depending on what phase you are, if you're at the very beginning phase, the best thing you can do is write a 50, 50 word story about what you're building. So 
you have to know that before you can do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you know your story and you know your audience and who you're telling your story to, then what I would do is find 10 influencers on Twitter and create a list. So, and again, the influencers, you can just Google it. You can just, if you know the top of your head, just search for their names. Pretty much most of the time, their labels tend to be their names. Mm. And find a group of 10 and start following and create a list. Great. Those are so easy. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That's awesome. I love it. Okay. Well, Christine, thank you so much for being on Wix Design Her and sharing all of your expertise. Tell us uh, again your Twitter, your Twitter handle and what's your website where we can find you too. Okay, my website is busygirltech.com. And like I was giving you an example with like Feedly, how to quickly get information and like lists. I have a newsletter that is called Techsplain that comes out every two weeks and it's filled with just three bullet points of three easy things that tech can simplify your life. So nice. go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. Mm -hmm. And then you can follow me and please follow me on Twitter and ask any questions at cgallop underscore. And then if you can't remember that, just go to Busy Girl Tech and then it'll direct you to see Gallup. Right. So you have links. All right. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed having you and you and I could probably talk about this topic for hours <laughs> on end. So after the show's over, we can talk some more, but, but thank you all for joining us and thank you for joining Christine on our topic of PR and how you can best get media coverage for your small business. And we enjoyed having you here on Wix Designer. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but please hit subscribe. We want you to subscribe to Wix Design Her so that you can continue to get a continual feed of all this fabulous goodness of stuff that's going to help grow your business and grow your website. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.